live stream i am excited to do this one because we got some fragrances to try out obviously it's a fragrance channel so we got some fragrances to try out i uh pushed my live back about five minutes because i was hoping that uh i was trying to wait for ross to finish his live stream he was still rambling on at the end so i figured that i would just start it anyway uh, so, sorry, Ross. <laughs> but anyway, if you are catching up to this live stream on the replay, everybody make sure to hit that like button so we can get on the algorithm. I appreciate everybody. We just hit 8,000 subscribers. So thank you guys very much for everything. We're on our road to 10K. We hit 7,000 subscribers. What was it, like a month and a half ago? It was right before I left for vacation. So like February 10th. Uh, so we're definitely on track to hit 10,000 by the summer. So that's pretty awesome, considering I like to not do the uh, typical lists and stuff like that all the time that people do. So, yeah, I appreciate everything that you guys are doing. And with that saying, uh, said next week, we are going to be doing our 8,000 subscriber live stream, in which I always do giveaways. And we're doing two bottles, um, courtesy of uh, one of my subscribers. And he sent me a bunch of Dua fragrances. And so next week, I'll be giving away two random Dua bottles. So definitely pay attention to that. Let me get this pulled up so that I can see what y'all are saying. Giancarlo, what's going on, man? JCB, uh, scent of the day is, uh, don't know the name of that, but it's Floor Oud. Nice. And then we have, what's up, Eric? I uh, can't wait to hear your thoughts on Blue Atlas. The notes look amazing. It's right here. That's the back of it. But it is called Blue Atlas Bountiful. And I'm trying, at least this time, I'm trying to stop the haters before they even start. Because as you guys, if you've been part of the fragrance community for a while, you know that there are a few brands that, especially when it comes to uh, pushing their fragrances out to um, reviewers, they send them out and people start to think that it's all commercialized and that it's all sponsored and stuff like that. So uh, this time I just uh, bought it. Well, technically my wife bought it for me as an early birthday gift for like a month and a half early, but... Uh, she loved Atlantis. She actually wears Atlantis more than I do. Um, and so while people were always giving me crap for that fragrance, just because I like it, uh, this time I bought it. So my thoughts on this are, you guys can't say shit. So if you're here to say something, then just leave. Cause I honestly don't care. Uh, but it is called Blue Atlas Bountiful and it comes in this nice little folio. So yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, let me know what your scent of the day is today. I was wearing Bountiful uh, earlier because I was doing my video for it for tomorrow. And then we have right now, I am. it, it was 22 degrees yesterday. And today it is uh, 71. Well, it's getting a little chillier outside, but uh, I'm wearing Atelier Cologne Pacific Lime. If you guys have ever been on a Carnival cruise ship and you've ever used one of those lime straws that they give you. It smells like a realistic candied lime. That's what this fragrance smells like. It is the most realistic lime fragrance that you can get. And it lasts about four hours, but I don't really care because that's the type of fragrance that it is. And just like a lot of the other ateliers like Clementine, California, Pamela Paradis, uh, very realistic candied like citrus. And I really enjoy that. And it's $60 right now in Joma Shop. Um, at least it was like a day ago. So, um, make sure you cl you click my link. Uh, obviously I have affiliate links for Joma shop and yeah, uh, Joma shop's really nice as long as it doesn't say that it's going to take like seven to 10 days to arrive. Cause usually that's like a month. So anyway, um, let me see what, what's up Mo. Welcome to Mo's what's happening. You said it. Uh, so you're eating some steaks. I made something that I've been seeing all over social media. It's called buttered chicken. It's a, uh, like an Indian, um, recipe. And I haven't had Indian in my entire life, like outside of going to like Aladdin's and getting a honey mustard chicken pita. Um, I've never had Indian food, but butter chicken, I saw it everywhere. So I decided to make it from, uh, from scratch and that stuff is great. If you've ever, if you ever want to try butter chicken, man, that stuff is amazing. You have it with some garlic naan and it's great. Not that you guys care. Interested to hear your thoughts on Bountiful. Is it actually worth the asking price? Uh, it, just an FYI. So thank you to whoever it was. I think it was Steve 
Uh, so Steve, if you are here or if you're going to be here, if you watch us on a replay, thank you. If you guys do want to buy Bountiful, uh, a lot of people were asking me if I had any discount codes for it. And Steve had one. It's called Hey, H-E-Y-15. I'll put it in the chat uh, if you guys want it. And apparently, I'm not, I haven't tested it because I bought my, well, my wife bought it for $100. So um, Hey15 apparently gets you 15% off. So that would be definitely helpful if you're looking for something for $85. Um, with that said, we will add around the 10 minute mark. So today we do have to do exactly 60 minutes because my daughter needs in here afterwards. So um, I'm only doing 60 minutes. Usually I always say that, but then I go like two hours. So just an FYI. Um, I don't know why, but Carlisle isn't for me. Hey, G-Law, honestly, Carlisle wasn't for me for the first year. Uh, whenever I first tried Carlisle, I was like, nah, it's not really my type, my type of fragrance. It took me an entire year of testing out that fragrance and coming back to it and coming back to it. And even to this day, I still only find it like around an eight. It's something that I wear on a special occasion if I'm like going out during the cooler weather and I want something that's like spicy, um, that would be what I would go for, but it's not one that I choose over a lot of other things. Like I don't own a bottle of Carlisle, but I do understand why people like it. It's just not one that I'm 100% on board with. So I completely understand that. Um, his scent of the day is Sauvage Eau de Parfum. That's the only Sauvage that I own. I used to own Elixir, but I sold that because it's way too strong for me. Um, Patrick's Life, g -Law. I didn't like Car Carlisle either. It was too stuffy and mature for me. I don't like red tobacco DNA either. I, red tobacco has a little bit of this harshness to it. If you don't like red tobacco, but you like what it's about, Triumph of Bacchus by Argos, it kind of fixes that. Um, it, it actually blends together red tobacco and Carlisle spices, puts those together and has this fruity peach opening. Um, I actually like that better than both of them, which is why it's the only one of the three that I own. Um, which clone fragrances do you like? Uh, well, I've done a top 10 clone fragrances. I always do that at the beginning of every year. Um, the top 10 for that year, because I usually don't go too much towards clone fragrances. I'll only do it if you guys ask me to. Uh, one that I just tried out, it's called Sunset Swim. Um, it's an afternoon swim clone. That one's actually pretty good. Um, there is the... One that I just tried the other day, it's a clone of YSL's Tuxedo. It's called Suits, and it's $36 or $35, and it's by Fragrance World. Uh, that one actually gets it pretty close. If you want something like YSL Tuxedo, that is a nice, ambery, spicy scent. Um, then there was a Baby Cat clone, which Baby Cat is one of my favorite fragrances now. Uh, there's like almost this chocolatey vibe to Baby Cat that I really enjoy. It's the way that the amber mixes with the vanilla. Uh, I'm not sure if there's actually cacao in it, but uh, I never looked up the notes for Baby Cat, but it kind of comes off a bit like chocolatey. And uh, I think it's called Refuck It. Uh, R you know how it's spelled. I always call it Refuck It, but that's not what it is. It's like Refuck Ot, and it's a really good clone of Baby Cat. You also have Detour Noir, which is a really nice clone of Parfums de Marley Layton. Um, there is one that is Kaid Alfresan. It's not a clone of anything. It's supposed to be, but it's not. It kind of smells like grilled pineapples with spice and aromatics. That one's really good. Um, also one that's supposed to be a clone of Bulgari Tiger, but it's not really. But it smells really good is um, Afnan, uh, I something blue. I can't think of the damn name now. I have it right behind me. I just don't feel like reaching back to get it. Um, yeah. Somebody in the chat put it. I, I, I don't know why it's slipping my mind. And speaking of Afnan, if you want a clone of John Paul Gaultier's Ultramol, a fresher, more fruity version of it is uh, Afnan's 9 p.m. Tarathi Blue. I knew it was something blue. I just couldn't think of the damn name. But all of those are pretty good. Um, again, I'm not like heavy into clones, so I know people out there would be like, well, there's this one by this random ass brand. Oh, and another good clone of red tobacco that fixes all the issues in red tobacco is Paris Corners Wild and Tobacco. And then if you want a clone of Amen Pure Havan, you have Rayan Insurrection 2 Wild. Uh, that one does it pretty well, and it's only like 15 bucks. 
Uh, what do you think of Guerlain's Loam Ideal EDT versus Lintense? Uh, which is the better dry down? The vanilla. Um, I don't know what that last word is. Um, I'm thinking you're supposed to say Guerlain. But so the Eau de Toilette, I said this in my last live stream. Um, the Eau de Toilette is the easiest one to wear. If you want to wear Guerlain's Loam Ideal Eau de Toilette, it's the aromatic, slightly fresher take on that DNA because it is the DNA. It's that almond tonka, but it's way dialed down and you have this aromatic freshness on top with a bit of citrus. That is what that one's made for is more of a signature uh, part of the line. So if you want that line, but you want one that you can wear all year long, that's gonna be it. If you want a fresher one, the Low Medial Platine Privé, even though I like the cologne better, um, it's a very similar version of the cologne that came out last year with a little bit of a fruity opening. I like that one. And then for the fall and winter, you have the Lintense and the Extreme that are my two favorites. Um, of the entire line, I would say the Extreme and the uh, Intense are my favorites. The Extreme is one that you can only really wear in the winter, at least in my opinion, because of the powdery tobacco nature from that uh, fragrance and then you have that warm plum in it. Uh, it's a nice fruity a little bit more vanillic take on that line and then you have the Eau de Parfum with the cherry not a big fan but the Lintense is kind of just like it has a bit of freshness like the original Eau de Toilette but then you add in this nice incense uh, but that one is very nice it's the most like elegant in the line and I, I really enjoy that thank you to Mo for sending it to me I, that was the last one that I needed to try in the line I also tried Cool, which was nice, but it's no longer available in Sport. I have not tried, actually, which does not exist anymore. Yay, butter chicken. My parents are from India. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> really good. It has like a touch of the curry in it, but it has like a tomato paste. Um, it almost tastes like an Indian vodka sauce, um, and I really enjoy it. Uh, what else do you think? What do you? Uh, I already read that. Uh, do you think Chanel will ever top, uh, will ever hop on the Elixir or Intense bandwagon with their blue line? So, last year, Jeff from SoCal Sense went into a Chanel boutique, and he talked to the manager of that boutique. And they said that Chanel would be coming out with a new release sometime in the next year, and that it was not going to be an Elixir. The person there said that they don't hop on trends, they create them. Um, and so that never really came to fruition. But speaking of Jeff from SoCal Sense, there he is right there. Um, and then the last time apparently he went into the boutique and they were, zzz, they're, they're uh, yeah, I said butter chicken, Mo. Um, but their lips were all sewed shut. So um, I don't think that they'll come out with an elixir. I think that if Chanel comes out with anything, it's going to probably be um, like in their Allure Ohm line or something new. I don't see them doing the Blue de Chanel unless it's like X straight to Parfum. I could see them doing that, but I, mean, I don't see them actually doing an elixir. I just don't see them doing it, but that's just me. Uh, Tarothi Blue, uh, Girl... Oh, <laughs> Girl and Aid. Like, kind of like uh, Gatorade. Uh, did you try Cartier fragrances? I tried Noir Absolute last year. Uh, it kind of smells like a campfire, but I there was a little bit of a funkiness in the dry down I wasn't huge into. Um, with that said, I've also tried the Parfum. I like that, but the rest of the line I haven't tried outside of just like a testing a few of the original ones in store and they never really did anything to me. If I was to buy one, it would be that limited edition Parfum because I did actually like that one a lot. But the newer Absolute from last year, nothing special about it. Um, Randy, wasn't I supposed... Oh, shit, Jeff. I completely... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot. I, we haven't talked like in the last like four or five days. I completely forgot. Um, we'll do it next week. Next week you can hop on and, uh, we'll, we'll do, I'll, I'll have to talk to you guys after. I'll talk to you after, not you guys. Uh, good evening from, what's up, Kevin? Uh, we're going to get into the Blue Atlas in just a second. I think Chanel will do Rouge de Chanel. Just the way, <laughs> that was in my video. Well, what I think the upcoming releases will be, I said, I think that since they did Blue de Chanel, um, it's B-L-E-U, which just means blue. Um, in France, I think. 
and or Spain maybe I can't remember. Um, and then I said, why don't we just do Rouge de Chanel, which is red. So they'll have their blue line and their red line. I think that would just make sense. And for it to be like more of a warmer take on their type of DNA, I think that would be nice. Um, Machino Toy Boy. Don't like that fragrance. I don't like florals, though, so I'm glad somebody enjoys it. Um, you and Jeff should meet up. Yeah, I'll fly all the way across the country. I am planning a trip out to L.A. probably in the next couple of years, so if I get out there, I'll obviously stop at Jeff's house. Um, I think Chanel's in no rush to put anything out. I mean, they're Chanel. They can sell Blue Day Chanel for the rest of their lives and not put anything else, and they're still going to be in the top, like, five fragrances out there. So, I mean, why would you? I mean, but I understand from the perspective of the 1% of the fragrance community that's like, when's Chanel coming out with something else? Chanel does not give a shit about what we think. Um, if they did, they'd be sending bottles to people, but they don't do that. They're like the one company that doesn't. Um, what's up, Celtics or Jay? I always forget that you're Jay now. I don't know why I always forget. Um, Layered both Prada Oceans. Nice. Well, now you're going to have to triple layer whenever the new one comes out. Let me know what that one smells like. What are your mature fragrances in your collection that your wife... My, my wife is not huge into super masculine fragrances. Like, she does love, uh, like, YSL's Tuxedo. She liked that one. Oh, it also suits the, the clone of it. Um, she likes Terre d'Hermes Eau Gervre, which isn't like super masculine or anything. She did like Bulgari's Wood Neroli, which I hate. Um, I, I can tell you that. Uh, she likes CH Men Privé. Uh, that one's nice. Uh, there's also, what was that other? Um, Ombre Leather Parfum. She likes that one. Uh, so she seems to like the more woody and leathery fragrances, but she hates like ones that are like heavy powders. Like, uh, what, what's, what's that one? Jeez, I can't even think of the damn name. But she doesn't like anything like heavy, powdery, uh, any of amouages or anything like that. She doesn't like. But those ones that I just mentioned, she really likes. I think out of all of those, her favorite's probably uh, YSL's Tuxedo. Um, or, yeah, I would say as far as like super masculine fragrances, uh, even though that's not even like horribly masculine now that I think about it, um, I would say... Oh, uh, Zahara Signature Pour Ohm. Um, Mo sent me that. She really likes that, too. That one's, that one's nice, too. But now that I think about it, it's like YSL's tuxedos. <laughs> it's unisex. It's like not super masculine. So I would have to say maybe Bulgari's Wood Neroli or CH Men Privé. Now that I'm thinking about it, I was like, wait, what? YSL's tuxedo, even though it is like, to me, it smells masculine. It is made for unisex. Um, I'm taking Randy to Disneyland. <laughs> I'll, I'll go to Disneyland. I've never been there. I've been to Disney World like 50 times. Uh, um, and with that said, Bruno, it, it sounds weird, but when it comes to like hyper-masculine fragrances, I don't own that many. I, I am like Stronger With You Tobacco, that new one. My wife likes that a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean... If I'm thinking about it, like hyper masculine fragrances outside of like the ombre leather and stuff like that, I don't own that many. I own probably like 10 to 15. Most of mine are like masculine, but not the super woody, super smoky, amouages, stuff like that. Like I don't own those kind of fragrances. Um, do you like L Louis Vuitton fragrances? I do, but they're really freaking expensive. Um, I... Love Afternoon Swim. It's just, it doesn't last forever for me. So for a $300 purchase, I have enough decants of Afternoon Swim that have been sent to me by various different sources that I combined, uh, combined together that I never actually needed to buy a bottle, but I know she's going to want that at some point in time. The new Pacific Chill from last year, that one's really good. It's like fruity green. Um, that one's really good. Um, and then the one that I just tried out... Whoop, the one that I just tried out recently is uh, Lamensite or Lamensity, and that one's really nice. I just tried it out two days ago, actually. I don't know who sent that to me, but I found it in my decant collection. I was like, where did I get this from? Um, anyway, 
Um, I need to get into this soon. So Osha Bray is like the most youthful airman. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, that's what I'm saying for me. I, it's, it's hard for me to even say that. Cause as far as like super masculine, like woody, super smoky fragrances, I'm not a huge fan of that in general. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that as far as like barbershop and fougere style fragrances, like Eau Sauvage, and so you won't find me wearing those. Um, I, I usually rock with the fragrances that are made for people between the ages of like 20 and 40. Those are, that's like my realm. Um, I do own obviously some fragrances that are made for more of like the 18 to 25 crowd. But I mean, I, I usually hover in the middle there. I don't really go like super heavy masculine. I never have been like a huge fan of that. Um, do, 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 do. like PDM Harad. I mean, I guess that one's another one. Uh, PDM Sedley, but again, they're not hyper masculine fragrances. The one person that I know loves hyper masculine fragrances, um, he sends me a sh crap ton of fragrances. And Eddie, not 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 to mention Eddie just arrived from Fragnificence, um, but. Yeah, a bunch of people have been sending me a lot of really hyper masculine scents, and I am not, I, I haven't been a big fan of them. Speaking of that, we have like a lot here too. Uh, so we have one that was sent to me by, uh, we have a bunch that I'm going to be going over today. So we have the Blue Atlas one that I'm about to talk about in two seconds. Then we have Montal's Infinity. We have uh, CK Summer 19. We have Vita Loca. I think that's Mandarina Duck. I'm not 100% sure. Perry Ellis M. This one's, I think it's hyper masculine. It would be Gucci Intense Oud. And then one that you guys are would be super shocked that I have never tried. Ferragamo's F Black. Thank you to Jeff for sending that to me. I've seen it a thousand times. I've never bought it. So I'm going to try that one out too. Um... Find, found YSL YEDP 100 milliliter with a 10 milliliter travel spray at Nordstrom Rack for 85. That's really good. That's even better than Joma Shop. So that's a, a good pickup. 100 milliliters can't beat that. Uh, just blind bought PDM uh, Herod. FYI, Costco website 225 bucks. Ooh, that's too expensive. Tony, uh, you can get PDM Herod on Venba Fragrance. The full presentation for 165. Um, just an FYI, if you want to look up niche fragrances, especially like PDM, Initio, you want to look at Venba, V-E-N-B-A fragrance.com or Aura, A-U-R-A fragrance.com. Uh, those two are the best. I understand that Costco does have some good sales, but I wouldn't spend more than $170 on Herod ever. Uh, so I wonder if you're able to return that because you can get that for $165 right now. I know because I just posted it uh, like two days ago. Oh, so what's up, Eddie? I just got a sample of LV Imagination. It's a brisk. That's the one I want to try. Fresh ginger and tea. I want to try LV Imagination because I love ginger and I love tea. Reminds me of a fresher, high, higher quality Wulong Cha, which is right there. Love Wulong Cha. I need to try that soon. Um, the ones who wear heavy masculine scents wear a ton of scents that most think are old people fragrances, masculine, feminine. See, I, I feel the same way. Whenever I wear them, it makes me smell like if it's too powdery, it makes me smell like a grandma. If it's like too woody or too smoky, it makes you almost smell like a 50 or 60 year old. And here, if you're a 50 or 60 year old, that's great. Um, I'm just saying that for me, I prefer to wear the ones that are a little bit more mass appealing and I'm still in that stage. Maybe I'll grow into that, but I doubt it. It's just not the way that I'm built. Uh, I'm built like a pear. <laughs> Set of the day is Coca Loco. All right. So now we're getting into this. Sorry. I thought it was going to be 10 minute mark, but 24 minute mark, I guess. So this is blue Atlas. And again, I already wore this. I put it back in so you guys could see the presentation. It does not come with a film around it. Um, but yes, this is what it looks like. Blue Atlas Bountiful. And I don't have the right lighting on me right now. But if you saw my Scent of the Day post on... Oh, it kind of looks like you can see through it. 
Let me see if... Yeah, you can see straight through it. It's a really cool bottle. Not to mention that they kept the atomizer from Atlantis. One of the best atomizers I've ever seen in any fragrance. And I am spraying that on again because this fragrance is immaculate. It is so freaking good. I am not joshing you guys, man. This stuff is well worth the price. I mean, again, you, for Hey15, you get 15% off. At least that's what Steve said, uh, who is one of my moderator, or one of my subscribers. I don't know if that's true. Again, I didn't try that. But if you would, it's advertised as an, an any season fragrance. This is a spring fragrance through and through. I mean, maybe you could wear it in summer, but you need to wear this in the spring 100%. When you first spray it on, you know what it smells like? It smells like a higher quality Banana Republic linen vetiver slash vintage green with a twist. It is sweet and uh, it's like green grassy, but also has a little bit of sweetness and some citrus. But... If you want something that is green, it is effervescent, and then it has a little bit of this green earthiness to it underneath, which is only there in the opening. I have to tell you, as far as green fragrances go, this is one of my, just, just from wearing it yesterday, it is one of my favorite green fragrances in my collection. And one issue that I had with Atlantis was the performance, and this one fixes it. So... Anyway, I'll get to that in a second. I need to take a sip of my coffee. So, Blue Atlas Bountiful. Again, when you first spray it on, again, it's green, it's grassy. It almost smells like it has a little bit of like a tea in it, but it has sweetness, a little bit of citrus. I don't know if it's like a lemon bergamot mix. I haven't looked at the notes. Um, as you work your way a little bit further into the fragrance, that citrus starts to dissipate. You get a little bit of this sweetness starting to dissipate too. Uh, while the sweetness does stay there just a slight bit, it really does mellow out as you get further into the dry down when it starts to get a little bit closer to almost like a linen vetiver meets Wulong Cha. Um, in the opening, I said it was almost like vintage green meets Parfums de Marley Sedley. But then I wore it again and I was like, maybe the citrus reminds me of Sedley and there might be a little bit of a cooling mintiness to it. But for the most part, this stuff, it smells like a mix between like vintage green and a little bit of citrus and sweetness and a slight earthy tone. As you work your way into the fragrance, it gets a nice vetiver and oak moss mixture that comes in. The oak moss doesn't come off too smoky and the vetiver is more like a green vetiver. And it's just, it's, it's very freaking good. I, I honestly, I was shocked when I smelled this because they were advertising it as a four season fragrance. And I should have known better because when they advertised Atlantis, they were advertising it as a hyper masculine fragrance. But that fragrance turned out to be honestly unisex, like straight unisex. It's for men or women. And the apricot peach mixture in that, if anything, it leans slightly feminine, which I, I still love that fragrance, but it only lasted like four to five hours on me. This one, it was six hours later and it was still sitting on my skin. While this is never a heavy, heavy projector, it is projecting above, between moderate and above average for the first hour to two hours. Then it starts to creep closer to your skin. And then for about hours two, three, four, five, it's about a foot off the skin. And then it's sitting down on your skin while still noticeable until about seven hours. And then it kind of falls off. But for this type of fragrance, for a green fragrance, I'm telling you. So the opening, again, more green grassy, a slight bit of a cooling feeling. You get a little bit of a undertone of an earthiness, but it, that's why I said green grassy, because that's kind of what I think about. And then you get some citrus. As you work your way into the fr fragrance, it kind of turns into more of like a green vetiver. The vetiver kind of comes up, and it's a heavy part of the fragrance, but it's not something like what you get in Perseus, where it's literally almost all that. Um, I gotta say, I gotta give this fragrance like an 8.5. As far as a green fragrance goes, this fragrance is fantastic. I, I, I bought it just because I, I wanted to shut up the drama. Like, so people didn't come in and say, 
oh, you were sent that, blah, 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 because you know what people with Blue Atlas and stuff like that, but I got to tell you, this stuff is good. If you want a green fragrance that is perfect for the spring, that has, and you like fragrances like Linen Vetiver, Vintage Green, Wulong Cha, it's in that same realm, and it has a nice green vetiver, a little bit of spice, a little tiny bit of sweetness underneath it, uh, some oak moss, but not and it's not smoky or anything like that. It just provides a little bit of green. Um, it's just a green fragrance through and through. Nice vetiver, nice citrus in the opening. It's very good. Um, I'll have to get some more wares on it to do a full review where I can actually live with the fragrance and say, like, this is what it, it's just to me, the perfect. It is a nice signature scent for the spring. They weren't wrong about that. Um that so that's where it all started. Uh, I'll get back to everybody else's comment, but uh, Jay's comment just popped up on my screen. You didn't get a broken bottle of Blue Atlas Atlantis um, broken into pieces. I, I just rephrased that. That is where all the drama started. So when I had 600 subscribers, Blue Atlas sent me Atlantis. Like they weren't expecting anything from me. I was I had 600 subscribers. I just started like two months before that. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So I took that and I did a review. It got like 10,000 uh, views on it. And I was like, I like this fragrance. I like it a lot. And everybody in the comments was super positive. Like, this is great. I got it in. Well, it, it doesn't last very long. I really like the fragrance. Like, it was all positive stuff. Then Jensen's came out with his video. His video came out and he acted like he got a broken bottle, that it sucked all this stuff, and then I did another follow-up video for Atlantis after that, a year later, and it was the day after Jen Sense did his video, and I didn't notice that. I got so much hate on it, and ever since then, it has just been crawling drama from that video to the point where I almost wanted to delete it. So, uh, and I already know. I mean, nothing against Ash, but I know that whatever him and Blue Atlas had kind of fell through and he broke that bottle that th these bottles do not break easily. And so he broke that bottle. Um, uh, anyway, I don't want to talk anymore about that. Um, but yeah, Blue Atlas bountiful. If you guys want something that is definitely more on the mature, it's not going to be a hyper masculine, but this is going to be definitely a masculine fragrance. It's not going to be like a heavy masculine, but if you want something that is green citrus, nice vetiver, some oak moss, some spice, then that's what you're going to get with this. It has a touch of woods in the dry down, but nothing crazy. A touch of sweetness, but nothing crazy. This is just a nice, beautiful um, signature green scent that you can wear in pretty much any time during, I would say more of a daytime fragrance for the spring, but you can wear it day or night. It is really nice. I would say anywhere between 40 to 80 degrees is a good time for that fragrance. Um, and I'm going to be getting a crap ton of wares out of that way more than Atlantis. And I can tell you, this is a major step up for them, especially for the performance. Uh, again, I got like four to five hours with Atlantis. This one is a long six to seven. Um, what's up, Jafar? Too late to the party? Hey, no problem, man. Uh, we're not doing the 8,000 subscriber party until, uh, next week. So yeah. Uh, but thank you for coming. What's up, Sandy? Uh, Send of the day is Frappin Lou. I have never heard of that. It sounds like a take on Lamentity, but or Lamentsite. Um, let's see. Try Goldfield and Banks and Genius Ginger, or you can try Suspiro Vibrato, which is better in every single way than Ingenious Ginger outside of the warm amber. Suspiro Vibrato is just amazing. Um, is Bountiful like what Paradise Garden or Green Stravaganza should have smelled? Yeah, it actually is. Now that you think about it, it is. It's a little bit more on the green grassy side where, again, if you're thinking greens, that's why in the opening I said vintage green because in the opening of vintage green, when you first spray that, it has this green grassy vibe where it has a sweetness behind it and a little bit of a fruitiness, but on top of it, there is this green grassy vibe. And I really enjoy that part of Vintage Green, and that carries over to this fragrance. Um, so you should definitely, if you're interested in green fragrances, I don't know if they do decants because I haven't talked to them in a long time, but uh, you should definitely try out Bountiful. Um, both probably weren't as green as they were advertised. This is green from the beginning until the end. There is no part of this fragrance that isn't green. 
If you want a green fragrance, this is green. If you want a sweet green fragrance, that is the one right there. St. Jolip by Imaginary Authors. It smells like a bourbon sugar cube mixed together with sweet mint. Oh, that stuff is so freaking good. It is so damn good. Or if you want one that's like a mint orange creamsicle, you can get Lolita Lempica Green Lover. That's really good too. Any advice for a new YouTuber discusses fragrances? Sure. Um, when I first, just, just start the damn channel. Um, if you haven't started your channel yet, just get it started. Doesn't matter what you have, doesn't matter what setup you have, doesn't matter how many fragrances you have. If you have an interest in fragrance and you have an interest in reviewing them for other people, just start the damn channel. Um, other people don't start it and then they start and then they just missed out on months. Um, you need to just start the channel. When I started my channel, I had a plastic rack behind me with 25 fragrances on it. Uh, I was in my kitchen and I had a um, iPhone headphone microphone set up over a like a flip Rolodex that I had. It was just right here and I had no other microphone and I was using my phone, which I'm still using. Um, you can get free editing pro uh, software on your iPhone, which is called Splice. Now I pay the $4.99 for it, but I mean, just start the channel, um, discuss what you like to discuss, and that's it. Honestly, just do whatever makes you happy. Um, if you want, if you're trying to get as many subscribers as you can right off the bat, make sure you're getting into other people's live streams that you're discussing fragrances, but you're not advertising your channel. Um, just try to make friends with people. I made friends with Jeff from SoCal Sense before I even had a channel, and he helped me get to a thousand subscribers. And so I appreciate him. I mean, even to this day, we still trade back and forth subscribers all the time. Um, it's just if you want to do giveaways, uh, if you have any decants, get some decants on Amazon for seven bucks, and then just do some decant giveaways. I mean, it's five bucks to ship them out and. You might get a bunch of new subscribers coming in, even though a lot of times those are negative. Um, just come in and talk about your fragrances. Do whatever you like to do. And try to stay away from lists unless you have a crap ton of fragrances. Because lists are just dragging the fragrance community into a black hole. Um, but yeah, my only main thing is start your channel. Don't worry about the aesthetic. Don't worry about the editing. One, you, that'll all come in time. Just start talking about fragrances. Just hit the record button and then hit post. People don't care about the editing. They know that you're new. And a lot of people actually search out new people because they want that honesty. They want that raw, gritty video. To, and so that, that's my best advice to you. And also make sure that your collection at least has like a few for each season so that you can talk about those. Um, but yeah. That's about it. Infrared with Boss the Scent Elixir, probably. Uh, what are we talking about, Patrick? Um, notes for Blue Atlas. Oh, yeah, there we go. Thank you, John Carlo. I was just about to look those up. Uh, bergamot, lemon, pink pepper, orris, oak. So the iris in this doesn't really come across. Orris is the iris root. Doesn't really come across uh, like iris. Again, that orris just kind of brings a little bit of an earthy vibe to it. The oak moss comes across a bit green, not really smoky. The violet is there for a second, the, but not really. The cardamom brings a green spice to it. Uh, hyacinth, I've never actually smelled in person, so I can't tell you what that smells like. Tree sap, I mean, okay. Patchouli, there, it's a patchouli base. You can tell that's like a patchouli musky base, but so are like thousands of other fragrances. The vetiver and cedar are a main player in this. You get a little bit of creaminess from the sandalwood, but it doesn't really come off like sandalwood. But the dry down to this is, my, my wife said it perfectly. The opening and the dry down to this are polar opposites and they're both really good. And my wife usually doesn't like green fragrances and she really liked Bountiful. And it's great. I mean, this fragrance is really good. It's, is it like top quality, high niche style fragrances? No. I mean, it's, is it low end designer? Absolutely not. This is exactly what it's worth. It is worth a hundred dollars in my opinion. If I didn't have a discount code, what I would my, I've bought it myself. Yes. My wife bought it for me. I can't really help that because she wanted to. Um, but with that said, it's worth it and use the coupon code HEY15, and if it works, it works. But 
I'll do a, whoever wins the giveaways next weekend. Maybe I'll do a giveaway of Bountiful too, like the a decan of it, so someone else can try it. Uh, vibrato is a huge upgrade, really good. Um, PD, yeah, it's worth twice as much. That's probably why. Um, because it came out of nowhere and certain YouTubers were calling it the best summer fragrance ever. It was crazy. Which one are we talking about? Um, yeah, I don't know what we're talking about. Oh, that one. Yeah, see, there were some people that were like horribly paid. But for me, it was the best indie fragrance because it it's an indie fragrance house. And for me, it was the indie, the second best indie fragrance that I tried last uh, two years ago. Um, my favorite that year was uh, Southern Peach Tea by uh, Coastal Carolina Parfums. But I really did like Atlantis. And so people can't convince me that I didn't because I did. I should have Pacific Chill by the end of the week. Getting a bottle for, uh, with new cellophane. For, wow, 140 euro. That's nice. That's really good. Because 140 euro is like 150, 155 US dollars. That's really nice. Start a channel and make it unique to you. That's it. I mean, I started my channel and most people don't know. My fragrance channel was called Fragrance for Dummies. And the, the icon was the For Dummies book, and it said Fragrance for Dummies. My daughter, my third video in, um, I bought Boss Bottled Oud, and she's like, what does that say, Boss Bottled Dude? And I was like, no, but that's my channel name. <laughs> and so that's how I became Fragrance Dude. So thank you to my daughter. Um, but Rayan Insurrection 2 Emperor Orange Creamsicle Twist on... Ultra Zest, very good, and a cheapie. And it sounds very similar to Lolita Lempica Green, Green Lover. Um, I honestly would be interested in someone making a channel with just raw footage of them going into malls and so forth and giving one take reaction. Really? Patrick, really? Because me and Jeff consistently hate those people because that is all TikTok is. Especially the king of TikTok fragrance people who knows almost nothing about fragrance. And that is, uh, what's his name? Um, fragrance knowledge. Fragrance knowledge. He goes into Sephora's and legit just grabs a fragrance, sprays it, says, nep, grabs a fragrance. It, it's okay. Like, that's all people on TikTok really do. And I can't stand that. I, I can't stand those type of videos. They annoy me to death. Finally got my hands on a Code Absolute. Not going to lie. I prefer Code... I agree. Peacekeeper, I never liked Code Absolute. I don't hate it. I do like it. Um, any new fragrances on the way, Randy? Well, I just got this in. I know I just said that to you. I also just got um, my fragrance haul three days ago that I did a video of, of the Pacific Lime and uh, the Bond Number no. 9 New Harlem and the Initio Side Effect. I am planning on picking up Baby Cat. I also just got Stronger With You Tobacco in. Um, as far as fragrances on the way right now, I have one that my sights are 100% set on right now. I have heard nothing but amazing things about it. It's supposed to be a green. So this is what I've heard from a few people. It's supposed to be Boss Bottled Elixir with a green hue around the entire thing. And it's supposed to be a more versatile, more wearable version of it, but green. And it's Boss Bottled Triumph Elixir. I am waiting for that to arrive. I am, I, 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 not, I haven't bought it yet. I'm waiting for that to be on the site. They finally put the icon for the fragrance on the site that I always look at. And as soon as that fragrance is released, I am buying that in a second. But outside of that, no, I don't have any other fragrances on the way right now. Um, with that said, we are already at 43 minutes, so I need to get into this. Um, we're going to be talking about Ferragamo's F Black first. Ferragamo F Black. Again, I have never tried this. I have seen it a thousand times. I mean, and a thousand times is probably like on the lower end because I have seen it in almost every place that I go. But with that said, let's see what this is all about. I know nothing about this. Jeff sent it to me, and I've always wanted to try it. And maybe this will make me want to buy it. Or maybe it'll make me not want to hate it. That's good. 
Right off the bat, fresh, spicy. Ugh, I almost burped. <laughs> I was outside cutting the grass all day, and my wife brought me out a Sprite. And as soon as I had that Sprite, I had, it, you know, Sprite can make you burp a lot. Not that you guys care. But fresh, spicy. This is good. Wow. There's like a fruitiness to this, too. Almost like a, like a crisp fruitiness. But it's lavender, it's fresh, it's spicy. Oh. Is that apple? Is there apple in this? It's very, it, it's, I can't, it's, there's a lavender and a clean, almost like drier sheet, almost like linens. But then there's like this kind of like crisp apple underneath it. This is really good. I'm buying a bottle. Oh. This is something that's just an easy out of the shower. I mean, it's not something that I, I, I would like to wear this maybe to a work or a meeting or something. I can see what you guys are saying. You say it smells like baby wipes. I mean, the, the baby wipes I have in my house are Febreze. So, I mean, they smell good. It smells good. I mean, it's, it's like $19 at Burlington. Synthetic, though. It's starting to get a little bit synthetic. Like, and again, just to anybody who might be new to this channel, when I say synthetic, I understand 90%, if not 100% of fragrances out there have synthetics in them. <clears throat> Some brands can mask the synthetics better to make it seem more natural and more rich. This one, it, it's not masking the synthetics as well, but it's still, uh, it's still nice. Okay, black pepper, coriander, lavender, apple, and base nuts are tonka and labdanum. I would lie, I do get a little bit of the sweetness from the tonka, but I like this. I mean, you guys can say what you want about the baby wipes, but it, it smells to me kind of like a, a fresh, clean, crisp apple mixed together with a bunch of lavender, or like I said, almost like linens and dryer sheets. It's almost like what I wanted Prada Amber Pour Homme Intense to be like. But I need to wait till that dries down because I, I can already tell the opening I liked, but it's starting to dry almost into this like musty um, baby wipe. And so I, I, I'm going to give that a second. We have other fragrances to get through anyway. Um, and I know that one that I put in my uh, thumbnail I'm going to do next. Um, I'm holding my back my views on F Black. Come on, Sandy. If you hate it, you hate it. If you love it, you love it. I was curious about uh, curious and Google around the most sold perfume in the country. And Christian Jador, 212 VIP, and Azara Pour Homme are apparently top sellers in Brazil. Uh, that makes sense. I mean, they, they have uh, some odd fragrances down there. I mean, and 212 VIP is sold in almost every single duty-free store I've ever been in. Um, so that does make sense. Uh, Azara Pour Homme confuses me. But at my Macy's, at least, it is Azaro the Most Wanted. It is the most popular fragrance and the most sold fragrance in my Macy's. Two Macy's, actually. And that beats out Sauvage, Ar Ar Dior, Armani, and Chanel. And that is both of my Macy's. Azaro the Most Wanted is the most sold fragrance at both of them. And I think that's pretty accurate. I think Most Wanted is kind of like the fragrance of the decade. At least in my opinion, um, that's for, as far as designer fragrances are concerned, that is kind of like it changed the game when it came to mainstream designers. And so I, I, I kind of think that's an accurate depiction of the sales right now, at least at mine. So this is Gucci Intense Oud. Uh, before, I actually, I was going to say before I smell that, just an FYI, I don't like Gucci. The last time I liked a Gucci, it was Gucci Envy. If you guys want to talk about hyper-masculine scents, here you go. Has a little pinch of sweetness in there, but no, it's not a sweet fragrance by any means. Yeah, Amber heavy. I dislike everything by Gucci. Like I don't dislike I don't dislike everything by Gucci. It's just for me, every time I smell a Gucci and I go into a store and I try out a Gucci, it's just like kind of not very Gucci for me. 
It's kind of just like middle of the road. All of them. I've always said this. I swear to goodness that every single Gucci I've ever tried, outside of the one from last year, Gucci Elixir, I hate. I do not like that powder. It smells terrible. I don't like it at all. My wife absolutely despises it. Um, and I know that in the fragrance community, it is legit split. You either love Gucci Elixir or you hate Gucci Elixir. I, I, but anyway, um, when it comes to Gucci fragrances, I am about a 7.5 across the board. The Elixir was like a four for me. But every Gucci elixir, every, every Gucci fragrance, I was just like a 7.5. It's kind of just average. I won't buy a bottle. Anyway, this is nice, actually. For the first, like, two seconds, I didn't like it that much. But it's a nice smoked amber. I'm guessing there's oud in this because it's called Gucci Intense Oud. I like Gucci Pour Ohm, too. Uh, that one I haven't tried. But yeah, this is, it kind of smells like my dad. This is the kind of fragrance that my dad would have worn. Like he likes the heavy, woody, smoky, ambery fragrances. Uh, I remember uh, the first time I started getting huge into fragrances, I had a few really rich, ambery, smoky scents. And then I had the rest of my collection and he hated almost everyone. He hated the Chanel's. He hated the YSL's. But then he, he liked the ones that were like smoky, dark, woody. And this reminds me of my dad. But you know what's weird is that it also, I don't think there is in this, but it also, it smells like a smoked amber on top of like, like Carlisle or red tobacco or something. It smells like that's what is underneath it. It has almost like this sweet saffron or something underneath it. Let me look up the notes for it. Okay, well, this isn't going to be very helpful, but it's oud, incense, woods, ol uh, olibanum, amber, and leather. But, I mean, I, I do like it. I, I actually like it a lot. The opening I wasn't a huge fan of, but because it kind of smelled like my dad, but the more we're getting into this, there's like this warm, spicy richness that's coming in. And again, it doesn't say it in the notes, but there has to be some kind of saffron or tobacco in this fragrance or mixture of the two because it smells like there is that opening, which is that really heavy, smoky, ambery, warm, and rich mixed together with this like undertone. It smells kind of like a Carlisle red tobacco mixture. At least that's what I get underneath it. I mean, you guys might not get that, but I like this. Mo, I'm happy you sent me this. Maybe it'll be different on skin, uh, maybe, but again, I already have fragrances all over my arm, so. Uh, what's up, Black Sand? How you doing? Um, it's probably my worst blind buy. I immediately hit it in the back of my wardrobe. Okay, well, now we know your answer. Did I hear a new Club Day Nui dropping? I don't know. Um, if there is, I probably won't care. Um, there's too many Club Day Nuis out there, and most of them I could care less about. Uh, the limited edition one was good. Uh, but like I tried Untold, it was okay. I tried the uh, that Leighton one, the Blue Exclusive, or whatever it was called. It was good. It's just I like Detour Noir better, um, and so it didn't really. They they don't really do anything for me. There is an older guy on TikTok who goes on a live and recommends F Black to the middle and high schoolers. <laughs> Wrong age, my friend. Let me smell it again. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, the opening was better. Well, <laughs> my daughter just te texted her own phone and said facts. I don't know what that means. Um, you tripping. What am I tripping on, Black Sand? Oh, Gucci Elixir. Yeah, um, so when it comes to Gucci Elixir, I mean, if you go across the fragrance community and you take a pool, because I took a pool, and I just wanted to make sure I wasn't losing my mind, because uh, there was a lot of people that were telling me I needed to try it. I needed to try it. And there was a lot of people telling me, you're not going to like that fragrance. And then, so I tried it and I hated it. So I took a poll and I was like, do you like this fragrance? And it was almost like a dead, it was like 46% said they loved it. And 
it was like 2% said they haven't tried it or 3%. And the rest of the people said, I don't, I, I don't like this fragrance at all. And so it, it's legit split across the fragrance community. And I'm on the side of, I did not like it at all. And I know you liked it, Sandy. It's just, it smells like an old person to me. It smells like a seriously, like if I was smelling an old 80 year old man, that's, that is what I smell. And that is exact. My wife said it smells like puke, but it doesn't smell like puke. It smells very powdery and spicy. It smells like almost like a new age Yop Om. And I don't like Yop Om. Yop Om is disgusting. Um, yeah, God awful. Um, I want them to make a YSL myself elixir. Uh, they're probably going to do a YSL myself parfum next, most likely. Um, but I would try a YSL myself elixir. I mean, why not? I like the other one. Call me daddy. I knew something like CH or Paco Rabanne would be the top sellers. Yeah, they're all down there. Uh, struggle with you intensely is all they smell in Europe. That and the original one million. Um, I've had several people smell it in a 10 milliliter decant out of 13. Only one like, yep, yeah, that's exactly correct. Uh, that Pride Edition, John, John Paul Gaultier is fire. Also, you tripping. <laughs> I mean, hey, you like what you like. Do I like vetiver? I actually do. I like vetiver a lot. Um, depends on the fragrance, though. Like, I've tried Roja uh, vetiver. That one was really good. Um, I've tried the, uh, what's it called? Guerlain's vetiver. I like that. I tried Gray vetiver by Tom Ford. That one was really nice. I Banana Republic's designer vetiver, uh, linen vetiver, is very nice. Uh, even that one that I just, this one right here, Blue Atlas Bountiful. This one is really nice with the vetiver. I'm not going to say anymore because Ross just arrived and I don't want him to be, um, I know he did, he likes to experience fragrances on himself, but I'm just going to say the same thing I said in his chat. It's fire. Um, and that's pretty much all I'm going to say, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to give Gucci intense Oud. Uh, it's going to be another 8.5. I, the opening, um, the opening was probably like a seven for me for like the first few minutes, but as soon as it started to dry down, I really like it. Um, the vetiver and the new PD and Perseus, I, again, I'm not going to talk about that, but that opinion is going to also be avoided. Um, but it's, it's vetiver heavy. Let's just say that. Um, cause I am sending that to Ross at some point in time for a live stream. Um, the next one we're going to try. I think, yeah, this one is the one I already tried. So I'll just talk to you guys about this right now. It is by Montal. It is called Malt Montal Infinity. And this was sent to me by Mo. And it is, I, I'm not going to waste one of my decant cards cause I have already tried this fragrance. The opening is very feminine. When I first tried it on it, I was like, wow, that's super feminine because on my skin, at least on my skin, because Mo said his skin, it doesn't pop off like that. I get a heavy rose. The rose really pops off on my skin for the first five to 10 minutes. And so for me, it came off super feminine. As it started to dry though, fragrance is amazing. Like ridiculously amazing. One of my favorite notes is plum. And they mix that together with cherry in this star anise and a couple other spices. And I think there might be some saffron in it. It gets a bit creamy. It's fruity. It is sexy. The fragrance is great. It's just if you took away that first five to ten minutes of the fragrance where it comes off very feminine, this fragrance would be like a top 15 fragrance for me. That's how good I like the dry down. It's just that rose just kind of throws me off in the opening. But with that said, will I buy a full bottle? Yes, I will. I, I just told I told Mo, I'm going to have to spray that in the bathroom and like stay in there for 10 minutes and then come out because my wife doesn't like rose and it doesn't smell like it's natural rose oil that they're using in it. Um, and when she smelled it the other day, it didn't make her break out in hives or anything because my wife is allergic to some rose oils. And in that one, it was fine. So... Um, yeah, Montal's Infinity, if you like fruitiness, if you like plum, if you like saffron, and if you're able to overlook a little bit of a feminine side to it and wait till you get to the dry down where it gets a bit richer, a bit darker, you get some sandalwood that pops in there, at least I think you do, um, and then you have this kind of cherry plum mixture, um, it's really nice. The star and, uh, anise, while it provides a bit of depth and spice to it, it doesn't really come off heavy, which I don't really like star anise that much. Um, 
when used in moderation, I do. And with the, in this fragrance, it's really nice. It kind of blends in. And as you get further into the dry down, it turns into more of like this ambery sandalwood fragrance with a touch of fruitiness and a little bit darker and richer. And you get a slight tobacco touch to it. And tobacco touch, that's the name of fragrance. But yeah, Montal's Infinity is actually... Again, the opening is like a 7, but the dry down is like an 8.5 for me. That's another one. It's All three of those are really good. But if you're looking for something for the spring, I'm telling you, that one is amazing. Uh, I have three left and only like five minutes to do it. Um, anyway, so we got CK Summer 2019 Edition. It's one of the only CK Summers I haven't tried. And if I can remember correctly... It's the CK Summer Edition that has that, like, it looks like an animated bomb when, like, it's, like, exploding on the front and it says CK Summer. If I can remember correctly, that's what this one is. And I ran out of test strips, so I have to spray that on my hand. I've always liked the CK Summer Editions. My favorite of which is CK Summer uh, Days. It kind of smells like CK's version of Afternoon Swim. It's really nice. It's like a kumquat that kind of comes just off like a nice sharp orange. I really like it. This is aquatic fresh. Yeah. It's like aquatic and fresh. Little tiny bit of sweetness in it and a little bit of maybe like a citrus or something, but it's mostly just coming across like a aquatic and fresh. Let me see what you guys are saying. I kind of forgot that I was talking to people. <laughs> um, you don't have to leave, Ross. No, I, the, I, got, I was getting past that. I already reviewed uh, Bountiful and I already, and I wasn't planning on reviewing Perseus anyway. So um, if you like unisex for PDM, maybe start with Pegasus. Yeah, uh, Pegasus is a very, uh, what's, the, what's the word for it? I can't think, situational. Pegasus is nice, but it's very situational. It's like a wedding fragrance. It's like the only time I can wear Pegasus. It's like to like a wedding or some kind of like high-end classy suit and tie. Uh, so I wouldn't start there if you're looking for unisex. I definitely wouldn't start with that. What would I start with? I don't know. Um, if you're looking for unisex, I don't think PDM would even be the way to go as far as like unisex because a lot of theirs, that's why they have a men's and women's line. If you wanted to go unisex, I would probably go with like MFK or uh, maybe something like that, like Initio maybe. I would probably go with those. Um, I had Greenlay, <laughs> Greenlay, Greenlay, and had uh, Hobdon on watch. Uh, both of those are also, uh, well, they were on Venba. Um, and again, make sure you're looking on Venba and Aura. Again, Tony, if you're still here, make sure that you can, if you can return that, you do. Um, I don't like this. Uh, CK Summer 19, the aquatic part of it. In the opening was good because this, there was like a citrus or something that was kind of bogging it down. But you know when you get some aquatics in there that kind of come off fishy? I'm getting a bit of that fishy vibe from it. Yeah, it's not for me. Uh, it's coming off very fishy. I, I don't like it. I need to wash that off. Thanks, Mo. <laughs> um, I had French Defense on my... Oh, is that that's not one I've tried yet. Everybody keeps talking about that. I don't think I've tried French Defense. Have I? Did anybody send me French Defense that's in this chat right now? Because the people who send me stuff are usually in this chat. I tried a sample of Isola Blue. I think it's what you're saying. Does it smell super spicy to anyone? Or is it... It doesn't smell spicy to me. Uh, Pegasus is, is a smooth almond jasmine heliotrope vanilla fragrance for an ambery fragrance from Mind Games. French Defense or Grandmaster, if you like rose incense. My favorite from Mind Games is um, why can't I? It's right over there. It's, it's called the something. Um, now I gotta look it up. Mind Games, the forward. It smells like a pomelo cream pie. 
I, I was just seeing uh, Will Do Boss just never uh, stayed away from Fragrance Net, Fragrance X, or Fragrance Buy. But we take your recommendation on Venmo. Yeah, see, Fragrance Net and Fragrance X kind of suck nowadays. Uh, the ones, if you're looking for the best prices, are Fragrance Buy. Yes, because after your first sale, you can use a free ship coupon every single time. Um, but Fragrance Buy is the best for pretty much everything. If you want like a large collection of things and they get a lot of the new or European releases in. Uh, if you want high-end niche fragrances that are for a really good price, Venba is the best one. They never used to be, but now they are as of last November because they changed their sales model. And then uh, Joma Shop, as long as it doesn't say like seven to 10 days or one to two weeks to ship, that is probably the best price outside of Fragrance Buy. So those are the three that I would use. I would stay away from Fragrance Net and Fragrance X unless you see somebody post like a really good sale because the sales on those sites kind of suck nowadays. Do you think Ferragamo F Black smells like an old person? Um, it was getting there. It's, it's not like quite there. It just kind of smells, eh. Um, did I try French Defense? I need to look that up. French Defense. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, hold on. I need to look up the notes to it. That was the cherry one. Yeah, that's what I like that one. I, I do. I like the French defense. Yes. Um, yeah, Joma Shop is the best prices for the most part. Um, Fragrance Buy is right there with them. And then for the niche, either check out mine or Jeff's channel. We post like once a week or once every couple weeks the best Venba sales. So, yeah. Um, Will Dubois, blah, 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 blah. John Carlo. I know you said some stuff and then it went away. There we go. Where is it? Huh? But Fragrance Dude said it was fire. LOL, JK. Oh, okay. I, I saw a bunch of question marks and so I thought you were asking me. I just hit the order button for Blue Atlas Van uh, Bountiful. Oh my God, it's on you now. Did it, hey, did the coupon code work? Uh, whatever that Steve guy coupon code, hey15, did it work? I believe you like the forward the most. Yeah, the forward was the best one. That's the one that I am going to make in order for whenever the 25% Venba sale comes back. Uh, the forward smells, again, like a pomelo cream pie. It almost smells like a higher quality city rhythm Miami if you replaced the lime with uh, pomelo, which is really good. And I did try blockade. Blockade was good, but it was not my favorite. Um, it was kind of just an average because I've never liked the Aventus style DNA, and that's right square in the middle of it. Lana Weed Alone, Eau de Parfum. Thoughts? Um, the whole LNDL and Loam lines are kind of just like, meh, for me. I've always been very... So... I'll give you a few. Loam Altine. That is really nice. LNDL Blue Electric was nice, but it wasn't worth the hype once it was discontinued. Um, the original Loam and the original LNDL older batches were really good. And with all that stuff, it was just okay. Um, but Blockade, what I was just saying is it, it was it was okay. I think I rated it like a 7 or 7.5. And Creed Aventus Absolute, Jeff loves that. But the overall consensus is that it's okay. Uh, some people love it. A lot of people hate it. I'm in the middle. I said it was just like, it, it was okay. I mean, nothing amazing. I don't get the heavy spices and stuff that a lot of people were talking about. Like people were talking that it smelled like Aventus mixed together with Sauvage Elixir. I didn't really get that. To me, it just kind of came off like a slightly darker, slightly spicier Aventus. Um, but it, I don't know. Um, you make your own opinion on that. Yeah, I'm almost done. My wife's asking. I told you guys I had to be out of here in an hour. It's already been 68 minutes. Um, blockades dry down was all tomato leaf. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. What's up, Dame? How you doing? Um... Uh, so anyway, when it comes to LNDL Eau de Parfum, that one was good. That was the one that came out two years ago, right? Um, the one with the orange bottle, at least if I can remember correctly. It was okay. I mean, it had that kind of citrus and uh, oak barrel, if I can remember, because, again, it was two years ago that I tried it. 
Um, but it was it was good. As far as that line was concerned, that was one of the more above average ones. Um, you have to be interested in the L and L line to be interested in that, though. And I'm not a huge fan of the L and L line. Uh, Pure Avon, similar fragrances. Um, Zerjoff Naxos. That one you can find for like 180, 160, depending on what time of year you're looking. Um, that one is a better version of Pure Havan, just a little bit different. Um, that's the only one you really need to know. Uh, if you want a clone of it, then Rayon Tradition, Pure uh, uh, Rayon Tradition Insurrection 2 Wild. It's like 15 bucks. The Hey 15 did not work. Okay, I'm sorry then, guys, because Steve G who commented in my post today said it worked. And so I guess it doesn't, I will, um, sorry, John Carlo, because I know you just bought it, but I'll see if I can reach out to blue Atlas and see if they have any kind of discount code since I bought the bottle. And I I'll see if maybe they'll hook you guys up with like a 15% off code or something, but I doubt they'll give it to me. Um, I still, I, I still check Frag Fragrance Scent and X2. It's just, as far as like all the time sales, they're not the best. Anyway, so we have one left. This is the last one, at least I think so. No, I'll do this one on the next one. This is Perry LSM. The last one here is Vita Loca by Mandarina Duck. Okay, at least I have a little bit more time. My wife is feeding my dog. So I have a little bit more time. Ooh, tropical. I did not, oh, Vita Loca. I guess I should have expected tropicals, huh? What does that smell like? That smells like something, like something edible or something that I've smelled before. It kind of has like a Kayed Alfresan style DNA, but what does that smell like? I need to check out the comparisons when I'm done with this. This has like a sweet but aromatic green feeling to it, but it's tropical. Is there, there's like a mintiness to it too. It's synthetic. It's uh, that's the one thing I did not like about Mandarina Duck Black, is that. Um, so, I want to answer this question because I've had this a lot this week. Would you try Curly Fragrance? New fragrance, whatever that is. I'm sorry, but that fragrance is $268 after tax. I am not buying a fragrance from somebody that I've never tried a fragrance from them ever before, from a brand that I've never heard of before, and I'm not paying almost $300. I would rather buy a Louis Vuitton. Um, so unfortunately, unless for some reason she sends that to me, which I don't even think she knows my channel exists, um, I'm not trying that fragrance. I'm not buying that fragrance. And I have no interest in that fragrance. Nothing against her. It's just that price range is ridiculous. I don't know who in their right mind would spend almost $300 on a fragrance from somebody that has never really put out a fragrance before. And if she did, I don't know it. And so like, and that's the... She, if there are samples available, I honestly don't know. Again, I don't look into it. I don't watch Curly Fragrance's channel. Um, and the main reason, I used to watch Curly Fragrance's channel. And I, don't, I shouldn't really get into this much, but I've worked with a few brands where they just send me a bottle and said, do whatever you want with. But I know for a fact that she was paid a crap ton of money by these brands and she was pushing these fragrances as the number one fragrance for that season. And I know for a fact she didn't like them. So I stopped watching her channel at that point in time. Again, I don't want to influence your decisions to watch her or whatever, but I'm not going to buy a fragrance based on that information that I need, that I have. Especially even if it was like, if, if it was like Ross or something or Jeff or somebody making a fragrance and they, even if that was 250 bucks plus tax, which 268, I still wouldn't, I, I probably still wouldn't buy it. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry, Ross. I, I would not do, I would not do that. And Aromatics reviewed it because he got it for free. My, my guess, because he's in cahoots with her now. They were both seen at Latafa and all that. And they all, they both live in Dubai or 
at least have affiliations with Dubai. Anyway, so Mandarina Ducks, new fragrance, Vita, uh, not new fragrance, but uh, Vita Loca. It smells like an aromatic, tropical, minty fragrance. It's sweet. It's a lot less tropical than it was in the opening. It's okay. It's just, just what I was about to say before I started going off on that rant. Mandarina Duck Black and the Black Intense, they come off very, the lavender in them, uh, the aromatics that they use, the aromatic oils, they come off very oily and synthetic, um, noticeably synthetic again, like I said. And I didn't like black or black intense. I like what they're about, like the smell, but it comes off almost like you would buy a fragrance almost from like the Disney store. It's kind of, it, it just smells like what you would get from like a SpongeBob SquarePants. Nothing against you, Mo. If you like it, you like it. If anybody likes these fragrances, you like them. So far, every Mandarina fragrance and every Mandarina duck fragrance that I have tried so far smells like a fragrance that you would have like a SpongeBob SquarePants type fragrance where it just smells like it's a cheap Disney knockoff or something like that. It, it, and that one smells the same. It's aromatic, spicy, minty with a tropical tone, but is very synthetic, like noticeably synthetic. And so I'm not a huge fan. If you guys want to know the notes of it, uh, I just pulled it up. It is mint, pineapple, mandarin orange, which provides that coconut, um, which provides that kind of tropical vibe, which starts to go away. And then you get that lavender. I knew it. As soon as I smelled that, I knew the lavender was there. Uh, sage and geranium, tonka bean, Madagascar vetiver, and vanilla. Um, yeah, I, you know that a good fragrance can come from anywhere. Um, I, I agree with that, Jeff. You can get a fragrance for $10, like my Michael Jordan Legend. I got that, and I stayed away from it for so long. I got it, and it smells like a $90 version of Bond Number no. 9's New Harlem. It, it smells very nice. And so a good fragrance can come from any brand at any price. You never know. One of the best blue fragrances I have in my collection, you guys can debate me all you want, is Rochas Loam. I mean... I love that fragrance. The juniper and ambroxan mixture in there with a little bit of the pineapple. It's amazing. I've always loved it. And it's 20 bucks. Um, so, yeah. You can get a good fragrance anywhere you look. It's just with mandarina duck, I don't like it. <laughs> Damn, I feel like I'm hanging myself now. Stop. stop. Why? Do you like that too, Black, uh, black Sand? Um... African leather is so good, but I like the clone better. Go figure. John Carlo, I tried Russian leather. I tried African leather, and I really like that. But I tried Russian leather in my last video. I really like that, too. So, so far with uh, that brand, they're really good. Best dark Issey Miyake fragrance. Um, I've tried a few Issey Miyakis. I had this conversation with Mo the other day. Um, there's a few Issey Miyakis that I've tried. But as far as my favorite one from them, it's not necessarily dark. It's more rich. It is Noir Ombre. Uh, where the hell is it? Oh, it's out there. Uh, it's Noir Ombre. It's, it's, it's prepared for one of my next videos. Um, I've also tried Bois d'Argent. Um, that one was okay. I've tried Bois Arctic. I've tried a couple other ones. but um, Or Incense. Yeah, that was another one. Bruno, uh, that was another good one. Um, but Issey Miyake didn't really do anything stellar in my opinion until I got around to Noir Ombre. That's my favorite. Uh, sorry if I skipped anybody's things. It's popping all over the place and I'm also worried that my wife's going to freak out because of the fact that they needed in here like 20 minutes ago. But, um, I'm not a fan of Erica. Met her at Sun Explorer through starting her channel. In my humble personal opinion, she's quite biased. Uh... Uh, no, no comment. I, I just like, I saw, I, I don't follow her. I don't subscribe to her. All I know is that she posted a video today about panty droppers. You are a girl. And from what I can tell you, like guys. And so having a video called panty droppers from you, it doesn't make sense. And also that is like the, 
most that's like the worst video topic and that's what's ruining the fragrance community is that now we're getting filled with all these people that are doing all these just clickbait that, that's the word i'm looking for and that's pretty much all she is uh, her looks her titles everything all, all the people that she's with i mean good on her for doing her but uh, i don't agree with it but i'm just gonna do my own channel here and if you guys like my channel, you like my channel. If you don't like my channel, you don't like my channel. If you don't like my opinions, then fuck off. Dude, yes, I want Russian leather too. Uh, John Carlos, so the Russian leather was not exactly what I was expecting. It almost smells like a higher quality version of Burberry London. Like that kind of wintergreen, like pine tree mixed together with like a slight bit of leather. But it smells very piney and I love it. It's so neat. Spice Bomb versus Girl, uh, Spice Bomb. If you're talking about infrared, I like Spice Bomb infrared, the Eau de Parfum, and the regular. If you're talking about the original Spice Bomb, then I would go with Low Mediol Extreme. Okay. Uh, well, thank you guys very much. We're going to do an 8,000 subscriber giveaway next week. I'm also going to have Jeff on my channel as long as Jeff is available. Uh, so make sure that you go follow Jeff from SoCal Sense. Also, Fragnificence is Eddie. Um, also, follow Ross at TLTG Reviews. But Jeff... If he's available, we'll be on my live stream next week. Sorry, Jeff, I forgot about that. Um, but thank you guys so much. My daughter needs to get in here, and I apologize. I wanted to stay longer, but I can't. hope that this was helpful to you guys. Out of this whole thing, I, I do want to tell you, um, Montal Infinity is really good. You should pick that up. Gucci and uh, Intense Oud, really nice. Mandarina Duck, that thing sucks. Um, Blue Atlas, Bountiful, really good. So thank you very much. If you guys want to like the um, live stream, please do. If you're watching this on a replay, thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.